Okay, you guys said you wanted this video, so here it is. Warning, this is going to be a long, rambling, geeky video about audio and video settings. So if you're not here for that, skip on by. But this is going to be my best attempt to give you the best possible settings to get your Vizio P-Series TV working with your late model Yamaha receiver and an Apple TV 4K for the best possible audio and video. That means 4K all the way up with Dolby Vision and fully uncompressed audio surround tracks. Now, big disclaimer, and this is going to spoil a lot of people's dreams. If you need the best possible, both audio and video at the same time, you have no choice but to put in a physical UHD Blu-ray into a great player and play it that way. There is no streaming service, either online or through local storage, like I do here, that will give you the best of both at the same time. Every single hardware combination has at least one big gotcha, either the audio or the video. So if you need the very best, you have no choice still, as of the time of this video, to put in a physical disc. But that being said, you can get some really, really good results. This is the combination that I'm working with because it works the best for me, but it's still not perfect. I'll say up front, the one thing that is limiting this setup is I cannot stream from my local storage an uncompressed Dolby Atmos or DTS-X soundtrack because that is a limitation of the Apple TV 4K. Apple has turned off that feature for anything except movies you rent or buy through Apple. So you cannot pass through that type of soundtrack, but it can do everything else. That's okay because I'm not using Atmos in this theater. It's just a normal setup because there is frankly hardly any Atmos content out there that I care about. There's a handful of mainstream movies and it's just not worth investing in at this time. Hopefully in a couple years that'll change and I'll throw on some Atmos speakers here and add them onto my clip setup and that'll be that. But for now, this is what I'm working with. So my goal is to get the best video and that means 4K up through Dolby Vision or if you're working with HDR10, that means with 444 Chroma. And the one thing you're going to need is a really good HDMI cable. I have a 25 foot run in this system going from the TV up this wall, over the fireplace, over a ways, down the wall next to it, into the receiver rack. And it took me several tries to find a cable good enough to pass enough bandwidth to get the full signal. This is a fiber optic HDMI cable, it cost me about 100 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. It's a known good cable, okay? This, frankly, just works. Don't try to do what I did and save a few bucks and get the cheaper ones. It's just a hassle. Just get the known good, okay? And the reason that's important is it requires the full 18 plus gigabits a second bandwidth to do 4K in Dolby Vision at that length of a run or HDR10 in 444 the cheaper cables just can't do it and you end up with glitches or it can't support the video format. So that's the only big hardware gotcha. There are lots of other things that can do what I'm doing. This is what I'm working with because this is what I like. Uh, another really good alternative to the Apple TV 4K is the Nvidia Shield. It's, it does more than the Apple TV. It does a lot of gaming that I don't care about here, but if you're into that, it has excellent audio and video capabilities as well. But it's still not perfect. Same with the Apple TV 4K. Don't, don't get me wrong, this is not a perfect setup. Like I said, can't do that most yet. But hopefully Apple will change that in the future and more content comes out and then everyone will be happy. So I'm working with a local server uh, serving Blu-ray rips directly to the system because I want the best possible quality. If I were working with, say, Netflix or Hulu, you are not getting full quality. Yes, they do 4K. Yes, they do Dolby Vision. But guess what? It is not great quality. It is highly compressed 
video, okay? Even if you play a great title, uh, this one doesn't happen to be in Dolby Vision, but there are some 4K and, and like I said, there's a handful of stuff. Um, finding stuff that's in HDR period, whether it's HDR 10 or Dolby Vision is really hard. And there's, as of the time of this video, no great way of even finding them. What you have to do is basically go on Google and search for websites that have lists of stuff and they will list what's currently playing. You can search for HDR on Netflix and it will bring up some of them. So over here are some of the selections they have currently in 4K, in HDR, and some of them are in Dolby Vision and Atmos. They are at this moment updating their listings to actually tell you and you'll notice at the top there it says Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Okay, that wasn't there two weeks ago. They're going through their catalog and updating this listing. So at least you can see on the screen if it supports it, but you still can't search for it. There's still no filter to find stuff, but you can at least find some content. And it's mostly the stuff that Netflix is producing. Netflix, by the way, has the vast majority of anything available, far more than anybody else combined and it's still only a handful of titles, all right? So you can play this, and it will play in Atmos, in Dolby Vision, and that's great. However, it's highly compressed. Just because it's in Dolby Vision, which means it's giving you the best HDR signal, meaning the blacks are blacker, the whites are whiter, and you have a better dynamic range of colors, you still see artifacts, you still see banding, especially in like a blue sky. It's not a nice even wash of blue across the sky. You're gonna see distinct color bands, okay? That's what compression gives you. In these shadows here, that's not a super clean image. I see green and I see pixels. Over here in these, in these grays here, that's just terrible. I mean, it looks all speckled. That's compression. There's nothing you can do about it because if this were an uncompressed hour-long movie, Netflix would have to stream down 20, 25 gigabytes of data, and that's not going to happen. This is probably a two, two and a half gigabyte movie streaming over the network. Okay, that's the difference between compressed and uncompressed. And it's not just video, there's compressed audio too. So this is why I'm not really concerned with the online streaming stuff and why I do things locally because my Blu-ray rips are much higher quality. They're not 100%, but they're good enough where I can't see any of this. I've got a little bit of compression. I, I cut the size in half. So it's maybe a 20 gigabyte file instead of 40 directly off the Blu-ray. But that's okay because I'm streaming it here over my network not over the internet. So that's why you don't find uncompressed video on any of the streaming services. Even the movies you buy on Apple TV or iTunes or anything, it's a compressed version. It's a digital version. And that's just not good enough for me. Okay, so you can see that this does Dolby Vision and it does Atmos. By the way, uh, even though it's Atmos, it's still compressed audio. <laughs> So how did we get there? Well, there are a ton of settings here. So I'm gonna go through first the settings in the Apple TV 4K. And these are very important. Some of these are very unintuitive and you think they work the reverse of how they actually work. First thing you wanna do is make sure your Apple TV is actually updated. Go into system, go into software updates. Hey now, don't reset, <laughs> wrong button. Go into software updates and make sure automatic updates are on in most cases and make sure your software is fully updated. I'm at 12.1.1 as of the time of this video, should be up to date and we are. Okay, so like I said, this version works great with the exception of Apple limiting pass-through of Atmos and DTSX just because they want to make the money on it and make you buy through Apple TV and iTunes. But 
Here's the important stuff. Go up to video and audio. Here's the stuff that you must set. Now, I'm going to assume you have the correct cable and it is possible to do all this. If you're not sure, come right down here to check HDMI connection and click it. Go ahead and check it and it will run test signals through, okay? And if it doesn't pass, that means you need a better cable, period. I'm passed, we know we're good. So here's what we need to set up. First of all, you'll notice the top selection here says enable Dolby Vision. This is asking me to enable it. Do not click that. What we want is to set our format in normal 4K, SDR, standard definition, okay? If you have the correct cable and you have the TV to support it, this is what you'll see, everything possible. Now I'm in the US, so I'm dealing with a 60 Hertz signal. If you're overseas, you're gonna be dealing lower in the list here with the 50 Hertz signals, same things, okay? So just ignore all the lower stuff in the 50s. 4K Dolby Vision is the best possible, as of the time of this video, video format. But we do not want to enable it. What this really means is, set the video output of the Apple TV 100% of the time to 4K Dolby Vision, meaning everything is displayed in HDR Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision, by the way, is a better type of HDR. HDR is, it's really called HDR10. That's the kind of open source standard. Dolby Vision is a slightly more advanced HDR, which requires a license from Dolby. The difference between the two is when you play a movie that's just HDR, you've got one set of brightness controls for the entire movie from beginning to end, okay? So that means, say most of the movie is very dark, whoever created the movie is going to set the range of brightness possible on the darker side because that's where most of the movie is set. But if you've got some really bright scenes a little bit, they're gonna suffer. Dolby Vision is completely variable. So as the movie is playing, it will shift the brightness range on demand. So if you've got really dark scenes, it plays those really well. If you've got really bright scenes, it plays those really well. So it really is the better format. And there is no standard to what your movie is going to be in. Some movies now come out in Dolby Vision, some come out in HDR10. Most TVs as of 2018, the newer models support both. So it's kind of like the VHS and Beta Wars, or uh, what was that? Uh, when Blu-ray was coming out, there was uh, HD DVD. Remember those? Same thing, all right? Dolby Vision is going to win. It is the better format, but it's a little more expensive. If you're into gaming, this is the difference between uh, G-Sync and AMD's version. Can't even remember what it's called right now, but it's free. It's not as good, but it's free. The better one always costs money, <laughs> okay? So Dolby Vision is the better format. You wanna support it if possible because it does make a good difference. So why do we want it in SDR? I'll show you why. This means by default, set the Apple TV to SDR. Why is that important? Because the actual Apple TV menu is SDR. This is not an HDR screen. You see the nice dark gray background? That's the way it's supposed to look. If we set it to HDR, the whole thing gets blown out because it's trying to produce this screen in HDR, even though it's not an HDR screen. If you play a normal TV show on Hulu or a normal non-HDR movie on Netflix or whatever, it's gonna make it HDR and it's gonna make it all blown out because it's not an HDR movie. So we don't want the Apple TV to always display things in HDR. We want it to default to SDR because that is the default for most stuff. But don't worry, we can set it to dynamically switch to HDR when it detects something playing. And that's what we're gonna show you right now. And by the way, <laughs> even though we see this awesome setting right here, these 1080p HDR and Dolby Vision settings, wouldn't it be great if there were Blu-rays, normal Blu-rays with HDR? 
guess what? They don't exist. I don't know why these are here. There is no such thing. There's no such movie ever produced that I know of in 1080p, meaning a Blu-ray, with HDR. HDR only comes in 4K movies, also called UHD. So you got Blu-rays, which are 1080p, and you got UHD Blu-rays. I know, it's very confusing. In 4K. The only way to get HDR is in 4K. There's no such thing as 1080p HDR. So I don't know why these are here, but that would be awesome if there was such a thing. All right, so just ignore those. So set your Apple TV setting to 4K SDR. Now, I'm going to skip these two for now. Don't worry, we'll come back to them. Match content is where we can set it to dynamically change things. Now, what this means is content refers to what's playing, either what you're streaming over Netflix or what you're streaming through your local storage. Content is the movie, the TV show. That's content. Match means change something, and that's what we're going to do. So we've got two choices in here, frame rate and dynamic range. Guess what dynamic range is? HDR or not. Okay? Turn match dynamic range on, and all of a sudden, if it detects an HDR video playing, it will change the output to HDR. They couldn't make these menus more confusing, but this is how it is. Frame rate is very important. If you turn match frame rate off, everything coming through the Apple TV is going to be pushed through at 60 frames a second. That means if you play a movie, any Blu-ray or UHD out there, with very, very few exceptions, are coming through at 24 frames a second. That's the film standard. That's what movies are made in and what they play in. Why is that important? Because your TV itself requires a 24 frames a second signal to do special stuff that we'll talk about later. So if you turn this match frame rate off, which is the default, by the way, everything coming through is going to be 60 frames a second, which means things are going to look a little too smooth sometimes. So you want to turn that on. That means whatever the movie is, it stays that way. So if the movie is 24 frames a second, the Apple TV is not going to touch it. It's going to pass through 24 frames a second. So these two must be on to get you what you need. So with those on, even though this is set to SDR, when you play in HDR, it passes the HDR because it matches it. Now, HDMI output. This is referring to how the actual color signal is passed through to your TV. Leave it on YCBCR. This is simply the standard way most TVs are going to interpret the video signal. <laughs> RGB high and low, <laughs> this is reverse, this is opposite of what you actually think it's doing. RGB high does not mean high quality. It does not mean better. It actually, it's really technical. <laughs> I'm not going to bore you with it, but it basically means it's limiting the uh, color range. Digital color range is in numbers from 0 to 255. This is limiting it to the upper range of those colors. Low means it includes the low range. It's ridiculous, all right? Don't mess with this. This is the default. Your TV loves it. It's gonna give you the full quality. That's all you need to know there, so leave that. But I see a lot of people switching that to RGB high, thinking it's higher quality. No, you just killed your quality and it crushes the blacks. It makes the really dark blacks blocky and gray. So leave it here. <laughs> and by the way, there's almost no difference between this, the default, and RGB low. It's really passing about the same signal, but most TVs love this a lot better. So don't mess with it. Chroma. Uh, this is a little controversial because it doesn't do much between the two highest settings. But when you have HDR capabilities, you want to set it to 444. Uh, long story short, this deals with video compression and color bandwidth. 
420 is the lowest possible quality. There's one in between, 422. But when you have HDR on, it doesn't give you that option. It only allows the best. What you want is 444. It makes a very small difference to the colors, but when you're playing an HDR signal, it's very important. And if you have the high quality cable, it's not gonna be a problem. If you can, if you can pass the Dolby Vision test, you can do this, okay? 420, any 4K TV is going to handle. Even the lowest possible cables can do that. But you'll see a little less blocking and a little bit more color saturation in 444. So make sure it's set to that. If you were not set to 4K SDR, you would see the 44 or the 422. Sorry. But this is what you want right here. All right. So that's it for video. This is the only combination you want to be set to. 4K SDR, YCB CR, 444, and match content, both range and frame rate. Okay? For audio, this is what's important here. You want to change format off. Okay? If you have this on, what that's going to do is change what's coming out of the Apple TV and not pass through what you're giving it, meaning it may pass to your receiver a compressed Dolby digital signal, whereas you had the uncompressed. So you do not want to change it. It's just like that match content. They're just naming it a different thing. So make sure the change format is off. Luckily, that's the default. Atmospheric audio, Dolby Atmos, you want turned on. This does not force it on. This simply lets it pass through if it's there. In my case, it's doing nothing because I'm never passing through an Atmos signal because I don't have it. But if I did, it would pass it through. So just make sure that's on. If I ever stream something with Atmos, it will allow it to play. But I don't have Atmos speakers, so I won't hear it. But that's what you want it set to. Reduce loud sounds, you want off. What that does is dynamically compress the audio. You never want that. You want everything to be the best possible quality. This is all stuff in the Apple TV, doesn't matter. Audio mode, you want it set to auto. If you select 16-bit, uh, some receivers will not recognize the full quality audio you're streaming through from local storage. Just set it to auto and it passes everything through. And that's it for the Apple TV settings. So a little confusing, but that is exactly what you need to set things up. Now let's go through the app I use for streaming, which is Infuse. There are just a couple settings in here. Go over to your settings doesn't matter what your share setup is or what your library is or where you're getting your files from. You want to go all the way down to audio output. You want it on auto. Now it used to be on previous versions going back a couple years now that you wanted it on pass through. Apple killed the pass through option, unfortunately. Um, you want it on auto and what this is going to do is it will pass through whatever signal that you're sending the Apple TV. Don't worry about it. They've just, they need to update their terms here on the screen. Okay, auto will not do anything to the signal. That's what's important. It will pass through, even though it's not saying pass through, it will pass through the fully uncompressed if that's what you're feeding it. If you set it to pass through, uh, the Apple TV is not guaranteed to actually see the full signal because they killed the feature in the Apple TV that it no longer exists. So just set it to auto. The receiver will see a full PCM signal. That's the important thing to know. So just leave it on auto. That's about it. Everything else works out of the box with Infuse. There's nothing else you have to do. So that one's really easy. Now let's look at the TV controls. Now let's go to the receiver first. It's not a whole lot you need here. But if you go into DSP program, you want it on surround decoder. Most of the time, straight 
is absolutely identical to surround decoder. By the way, uh, you want surround decoder set to auto. If you want to play around with any of the DSP programs, like the sci-fi setting or the hall setting or the stadium setting, any kind of stuff like that, that's up to you. I don't do any kind of crap like that. I want to hear exactly what the movie is, period. Completely uncolored. The difference between these two, straight will simply pass through and play exactly what you're giving it. All right, now that's great with a few exceptions. So if I were to give it a uncompressed DTS MA signal, that's exactly what the receiver sees, that's exactly what it plays. Perfect. If you have it set to surround decoder auto and you give it an uncompressed DTS MA signal, guess what? It does nothing. It is smart. And when it's set to auto, it will not do anything with a full discrete signal, whether it's compressed or uncompressed. The difference is, if you give it an old signal, like a Dolby 5.1, digital 5.1, or even stereo, it will give you the 5.1 output automatically. That's good for some really old movies. For some reason, some old Blu-rays do not correctly pass through the discrete information and it must be set to surround decoder. For example, for example, Iron Man. This is a, I mean, it's relatively recent. It's a Blu-ray for God's sakes, but man, Blu-rays have been out for 10 freaking years. I cannot believe it. This is from 2008, one of the first Blu-rays. All right, back then it was the wild, wild west of standards. You had no idea what kind of soundtrack you were gonna get on a Blu-ray. It could be any format. And this one was not very advanced. Now, Infuse is showing Dolby Digital 5.1. It unfortunately is a compressed 5.1 soundtrack. It's not that great of a Blu-ray mastering compared to late model stuff. And if you play it, the receiver, if set on straight, only plays two channel. It does not decode this might be really loud. I don't remember what my volume's on. Yeah. <laughs> the receiver does not properly decode these old Dolby Digital 5.1 signals set on straight. So right now I'm looking at my receiver and just my two main left and right and my sub, because I have bass management on, is playing. If, however, I set it to surround decoder on auto, Boom, all of a sudden, now I have the correct Dolby Digital 5.1 soundtrack playing. I have all speakers correctly on. The center channel is now on, my rear surrounds are now on, in addition to the left, right, and sub. So, you want your receiver set on surround decoder auto. And you will always have the best soundtrack. It will not mess with your uncompressed stuff, if you feed it a 5.1, a 7.1, feed it an Atmos, it does nothing with it. It'll pass it straight through. But if you're dealing with an older signal, it picks it up better and it will properly send it through the amplifiers. So that's it. Um, everything else is to taste. I don't use any DSPs. I don't use the YPAO volume. I don't use any EQs, nothing. I want the full uncolored soundtrack coming through. So that's the only important setting on the receiver. Okay, let's go into the last bit and that's the TV settings. Going up to picture, this is where you get the best possible colors. I have it slightly modified from the factory settings. If you go into picture mode, you'll see some presets. Calibrated dark is where you should start your settings if you are in a relatively dark room. I don't have a lot of direct windows in here. I don't have direct sunlight. So this works great for me. What I've done is I've bumped up the backlight from 50 to 60 
and I've bumped up the color from 50 to 60. Those give me absolutely stunning results in all sources, period. Okay, that's all I've done to the basic settings. If you go into more picture, these are my settings. Color temperature normal, black detail off. What that would do is artificially boost the blacks. It crushes them, it makes them gray. It's horrible. Active full array. Now this is something that's a little counterintuitive. This is the local dimming. On good TVs, you don't have one big backlight source. You don't have one big array of LEDs. You have a whole lot of little zones. I think there's 128 of them on this TV. Tons of little pockets of lights that can turn on and off depending on what's on the screen. Active full array is how sensitive do you want this to be? You want it set on low, okay? This is the correct setting. This gives you the best blacks. If you boost this up any further than low, your blacks will no longer be black, okay? Don't go above low. Reduced judder and motion blur are the horrible soap opera effect, artificial smoothing controls. Leave them at zero is my recommendation. If you really like that look, feel free to boost them up. They go up to 10. Uh, I don't know why anyone likes them. Clear action is another way of doing the same thing. What it does is instead of increasing the frame rate or the incoming signal frame rate, which these two do, it flickers the backlight. And what it does is has the effect of killing the brightness of your monitor. I'll turn it on here and see if the camera can pick it up. I have my camera set on manual settings, so anything you see changing is actually changing on the screen. The camera is not changing its settings automatically. So by turning this on, right now this backlight, the LEDs of the physical TV are flashing at 120 hertz. There, it's, it's perfectly smooth to your eyes, okay? That's not the signal, that's just the, the backlight. What's creating all the light that you see on the screen? Clear action flickers it basically at half rate. It interjects black frames. And look how dim it got. And now I can see a slight flickering on the screen because now it's flickering at 60 hertz. And some people, like me, especially if I've had coffee and that's not a joke, can see the difference. It's how fast your brain is interpreting the world and interpreting what your eyes see. It hovers right around 60 hertz for people. If like me, you hate LED Christmas lights because you can see them flicker, this is the same effect. And it has the byproduct of making all your movies look like crap. Even if you have HDR on, nothing gets any brighter than what you see right there. Everything looks dim and just dull. Look at the difference right there. Okay. Now it does have the effect of smoothing out motion blur a little bit, especially in movies that are at 24 frames a second. Things that are moving really fast on the screen, they do look a little more clear. It's not quite as bad as that soap opera effect. It does work, but at the huge expense of the brightness. It makes your HDR TV look like a non-HDR TV. It's horrible. Keep it off. Reduce noise. Maybe if you're playing a lot of really old DVDs, not Blu-rays, I mean old DVDs, reduce noise might be of some use. What it does is it helps with the, the grainy black look. But for anything other than that, you don't need it. Nothing you stream, no Blu-rays, no live TV, nothing like that is helped by this. It will be hurt by this. Okay, film mode. This is what I was talking about earlier on the Apple TV, why it's important to match the content frame rate. Okay, what film mode does is, and it tells you at the bottom there, it gives you a little synopsis. It says, when film content is detected, and by film content, it means 24 frames a second video. Blu-rays. When film content is detected, picture is optimized when film mode is on. 
If artifacts are visible, change these settings to off. This makes Blu-rays look super clear on 4K TVs. It helps with the upsampling. It makes them a less... Uh, you ever notice how some TVs, some older TVs, will have jagged diagonal lines? It helps with that. It smooths them out. It's called anti-aliasing. It does some motion smoothing without giving an artificial look. Film mode is awesome, but it only works on 24 frames a second movies. Blu-rays. If that match content was off on that Apple TV, that means the Apple TV would be feeding the TV a 60 frames a second video, and film mode here wouldn't do anything because it would never see any 24 frames a second videos. It would never see film content coming in. So leave this on, make sure that match frame rate is on, and your Blu-rays look fantastic playing on your 4K TV. It doesn't look as good as a 4K movie, but it looks a lot better than playing your Blu-rays on a 1080p TV, even if it were the same size TV. It really does make a cool difference. Color space you want on auto, gamma you want on the default 2.2. Again, if you're in a relatively darker room. Color space is basically the depth of the videos, the range of color, not the videos, the depth of colors, the range of the colors that are possible to show. And this is why the YCBCR, which I talked about earlier on the Apple TV is important, because it matches what the video, it matches what the movie was produced in. Everything is in one ecosystem. If you're using a computer into your TV, this is where you're going to want to change it. But if you're watching Blu-rays, you're watching streaming, streaming videos, leave it on auto and it gives you a fantastic picture. And that is it for all the controls to give you the best possible audio and video between your Vizio P-Series, a late model Yamaha receiver, and the Apple, K, Apple TV 4K. Hope it helps. See you next time.